Hi everybody and welcome back to our tutorial sessions. Today we are here with Daniele for checking out how we typically perform an initial calibration of the diesel burner before delivering our dryers. Remember that this video is not meant to be a lesson on how to use the burner rather than an overall demonstration. It is very important that you are well aware of all risks that are involved by putting your hands on the burner before working on it, so that you have taken proper training and that you refer to expert personnel before operating the burner. So Daniele is showing now what we need to have for doing this calibration, which is the burner user maintenance book, some protective DPI such as gloves, a couple of screwdrivers, a plastic hose and a pressure manometer. The calibration is a three-step process. We will start by regulating the combustion head, adjusting the air valve for the first stage flame, adjust the air valve for the second stage flame. We will then conclude this video by going through some tips and tricks that we typically check out before delivering our dryers. So this is the front part of our dryer. Just for ease of camera, we have already removed the steel cover of the burner. We can then proceed by removing the plastic cover. We can now identify the main components that we will be working on today, which are the screw for adjusting the position of the front funnel, the combustion chamber pressure nipple for measuring air pressure inside the combustion chamber, and we have a couple of switches for enhancing the first or the second stage flames. That's the main control unit. Here we have the fuel pump. And a couple of nuts for adjusting the opening of the air valves for the first and the second stage flames. This gauge here shows the degree of opening of the air valve for regulating the air flow to the front part of the burner. We start now regulating the combustion head. So our burner is mounted to 7.5 GPH nozzles, giving a total of 15 GPHs, corresponding to 63.6 .6 kg per hour delivered at 12 bar. By looking at this chart, we see that the 63.6 .6 kg per hour refer to 6.5 notches of the screw located on top of the burner. We can then proceed by unscrewing this screw so that we reach these 6.5 notches. So once this is done, we can look a bit closer to the first stage air valve. We know that we are mounting a 7.5 GPH nozzle on an RL70 burner. And by looking at this chart on the user maintenance book of the burner, we see that we need to regulate the nut of the air valve so that we reach 2.6 notches on the air valve gauge mounted on the, side of, on the front part of the burner. We can see now how to do this in practice. We can set the burner switches so that we will be powering the first stage flame. And we can then start our dryer. We can do this by turning on the main switch, starting the auxiliary line, starting the fan, and then the burner. By looking at the control unit of the burner, we see there's a, a yellow light flashing, meaning that the burner is running its own uh, auto-diagnosis process. Once uh, this is done, uh, the light will turn into a steady green light uh, and the flame will be powered. The gauge uh, located in the front of the burner is showing one uh, uh, notch. So now we need to increase uh, the, um, the opening of the air valve 
by turning the top nut so that we the gate will be measuring 2.6 notches. After reaching 2.6 notches, we can lock the top nut. We are almost done with our calibration. We will be now regulating the air valve for the second stage. We know that when working with both the stages, we are spraying almost 64 kilograms per hour of diesel on the combustion head. And by looking at this table on the user maintenance book of the burner, we recognize that we have to adjust the air valve so that we will be measuring 9 millibars differential pressure between the head of the burner and the combustion chamber. So this is our burner still working with the first stage. And Daniela will be now connecting the manometer to the head of the burner and to the combustion chamber. We just need to unscrew a couple of screws for getting access for measuring the, the pressure. It is good to hold the, the manometer straight vertically for having good readings from it. We see now that the manometer is showing uh, uh, 7 millibars of differential pressure when working with the first stage. Daniele is now turning on the, f the second stage. And we have a new reading of uh, 7 notches on the front uh, gauge of the burner and uh, 13 millibar from the manometer. So what we have to do now is to regulate to adjust the air valve so that we reach uh, 9 millibars. So we, we actually have to close the air valve by rotating the bottom nut on the side of the burner, keeping an eye on the manometer. Okay, so good job, Daniele. This looks nice. Just a small uh, final adjustment on the air coming from the uh, main fan. So our burner has now been uh, calibrated. We can uh, switch it off, uh, disconnect the manometer, close the air inlet, and mount back the protection cover. So we are actually done with our calibration, don't miss out our nice tips and tricks. Typically we recommend for having a good combustion, keep an eye on the shape and color of the flame and on the color of the smoke.
An ice carburetor in flame might be recognized by a yellow color. It is not flapping, it is staying inside the combustion chamber, it's not too short, neither too long. While a bad carburetor in flame may be recognized by black edges, it could be flapping, it might be touching the combustion chamber, it could be too short or too long. On the other side, when looking at the smoke, a white or blue smoke might be sign of too much air. On the other side, a black smoke with some smell of diesel could be sign of shortage of air. A good combustion might be recognized by no smoke and no smell. So we are done now for today, so thank you very much for watching. Keep following us on our Facebook and YouTube channel. So thank you very much.